Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got just two more days until May and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, describe and explain style six mark questions. Before you watch this video, do please make sure that you've checked out the previous video on the evaluate style questions. There are also several general tips for the six mark questions at the start of that video. It's possible on a six mark question that's an evaluate style question, they may use the word describe as well, where they're saying describe why you have this opinion or describe why this is a good thing or a bad thing. So if the word describe is on there, don't immediately assume that's what it is. Remember, the evaluate questions are always looking for the good points and the bad points and you to explain why one particular viewpoint is better than the other based on those points. The describe and explain questions are always looking at a process of some sort and they want you to go into detail about how that process works. It may be a process which underlies how something works in general in the universe or on our planet or it may be a process which you need to follow to do an experiment or to gather data. Either way it's going to be something with stages. So are they asking for good and bad points? Then it's an evaluate question. Or are they asking you to explain how something works or how to do something? then that's a describe or explain question. They may use the phrase give reasons for or they may use phrases like go into detail about the process. They may try and get around it because they're aware that teachers are aware that they use the same sorts of phrases. So they may be trying to catch people out a little bit because people are getting better at preparing for these. But is it looking for good points and bad points or is it how does this process work? That's really what you're getting at with these. It's tricky to be sure exactly what process they might ask you about on any given paper, but they will be focusing on those larger processes. They could be something which you've done as some kind of experiment in the lab. So they might ask you what the stages of doing a titration are, or they might ask you how to take a transect across an area, or how to use a quadrat. So those would be experimental practice type questions or they could ask you about some sort of scientific process which you've studied. So they could ask you about how tectonic plates move around. They could ask you what the stages of how a power station works are. They could ask you all sorts of different things there. And anyone who's got any real idea that they tell you about, well, they're just guessing really. In practice, it's really difficult to be certain exactly what's going to be on there but do try and stay aware of those processes. Other things you might like to think about are things like how do fossils form? How does a plant absorb oxygen and water and undergo the process of photosynthesis? So all those bigger processes, that's what you need to look at. That's pretty intimidating, right? You really want me just to say, it's probably going to be this process. Unfortunately, again, as I said in the last video, when people have tried to second guess this, they tend to be wrong more often than they're right. So I'm not going to do that. What I will tell you is don't worry if you can't remember every last stage of the process. As I said in the last video, having a go is the most important bit. You're going to be getting marks for talking about particular stages and why that happens. So if you can get any of those at all, that's fine. If you can just remember one stage and some details about it, you should be able to pick up at least a couple of marks. Any marks that you get on a six mark question, those are all excellent because again, lots of people will leave this out completely and you're competing with them. If you can get some marks on a six mark question, you're doing better than the people who will definitely be sitting the same paper as you who get zero on the six mark question because they just skip it entirely. When it comes to writing your answer, before you actually start writing the whole thing out, what I suggest you do is just form that answer a little bit, do a very quick, very rough draft and do that and feel free to do it just below the answer. There's normally some space there or do it on one of the blank pages at the back of the paper. Anywhere like that's fine. What I suggest you do is lay it out. You are looking for three points, three things which happen in that process. Don't worry if you don't know every stage of that process. Three steps is all you are aiming for. Three is plenty because remember, 
there's only six marks. It could be a process that's got 11 stages, but you're not going to need all 11 of those because there isn't 11 marks to get. So you are trying to get three of the important stages. And with any of these bits which you've looked at, you can probably get at least some of them. Two is pretty probable. It would be pretty unlikely that you couldn't get at least a couple of them. And three isn't that tough either. Normally these processes will be ones which have maybe four or even five stages. So you don't need all of them, just some of them. Again, aim for three. So in rough, write down three of the steps, three of the stages which need to happen, just a single word or a couple of words. And then what you need to focus on is why you do that step or why that step happens. That's where you tend to get the extra marks, saying this happens and then saying it's because of, that gets you those extra marks. That's how you turn your maybe three marks into six marks. Let me give you an example and I'll talk about thermal power stations. If you don't know how they work, then do check out this video here where I explain all the stages. This is one of those classic processes which they love to ask about on exams. So this is a possible candidate, but it's one of many. In a thermal power station, first you need some source of heat. Let's imagine that it's a coal-fired power station. So I'm going to say the first step is that you burn the coal. Now that is just the step. What I also need is the explanation. Why do we burn the coal? Well, you burn the coal to release heat. There's stored chemical energy in the coal, and so burning it releases that as heat energy. So my first step is going to be burn the coal to turn chemical energy into heat energy. What's the next step? Well, the next step is that water is heated. There's a boiler inside a thermal power station and water's heated so that it can turn to steam and turn the turbine. Well, there's my second step. Step two, water is heated so that it turns to steam and turns a turbine. So then we need to go, well, why does it turn a turbine? What's the point of that? And so our third step is the turbine turns to generate electricity. And really, that's all you need for a third step there. So the turbine turns around, it's connected to a generator which generates the electricity we need. That would be a complete answer. You could possibly go into more detail, but that would be getting you the sorts of information which you need to have an excellent chance of getting all six marks. And that's pretty simple, right? Remember, you are going to be putting what is the step and why does it need to happen? Why is it important that that happens? Let's do another example. Let's do a process this time, which you might have done in an experiment. So we'll take using quadrats to sample a field and see what different types of plants are growing there. So step one is going to be to throw the quadrat and you normally throw it behind you. Well, why do you do that? It's so that it lands randomly and reduces the bias in your results. So step one, throw the quadrat without looking where it goes so that you get a random sample and you don't have as much bias in your results. Step two is going to be record what all the different species of plant in that quadrat are. But that's not really going into an awful lot of detail. So we're going to need to think a little bit harder here. You're going to record that, of course, but then let's take it to the next stage, then repeat this. Repeat it maybe 10 times to get a range of different samples. That would get you the next bit. Just saying, record what's in the quadrat, not really going to be enough detail. So record what's in the quadrat and repeat to get a range of samples. One sample probably isn't going to be enough. Getting a few samples is going to increase the chances of those samples being representative. And that's true for any sampling, actually. Anytime it's talking about taking any samples and repeating the test, it's because one single sample probably isn't going to represent all of the data that you've got. If you repeat it, if you do it a few times, it's going to be much more representative. To give you another example, not talking about quadrats for a second, to give you another example, if you look at the rest of the people in your year group at school and you just look to one person, that one person probably isn't going to be very representative of the rest of the year group. For a start, unless you're at an all girls school or an all boys school, they're going to be a different gender to 50% of you. So 
What we need to do is do a few samples and then we get a distribution and we get a more representative idea of what the entire field is like or the entire population is like if we're talking about it in mathematical terms. Our third step with quadrats would be to then analyse that data and figure out if we do averages and we do means, we can figure out on average what's going to be in a typical, say, a typical metre squared. So on average, once we've worked out the mean number of, say, daisies in every single one of our quadrat samples, we can work out the average and you'd need to describe how to work that out. They love you if you're talking about any sort of sampling to say how you work out the mean, add them all up, divide by how many you've got. That's literally all you need to say and say why that is. Okay, some of them might have had lots of daisies, some of them might have had not very many. If you work out the mean, then it's going to give you a much more representative value. So to sum all that up, because I did do all that in quite a long burst, first you throw the quadrat at random without looking so that you get a random sample. Secondly, you record what's in there, and then you repeat that. You do it again, maybe 10 times, so that you get a sample of the entire field. That's going to be more representative. And then the third thing you're going to do is look at each one of those individual samples and you're going to take means of those results. How many daisies are there? How many dandelions are there? How many clover plants are there? And when you take the means of those results, it's going to give you overall a much more re representative idea of what's going on. So, what's the stage? Why do you do it? What's the stage? Why do you do it? What's the stage? Why do you do it? And remember, maybe you're not going to be able to get all six of those, but if you can get some, then you stand yourself in much better chance of getting marks on this and improving your score overall. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.